Hello, back again to do another unboxing and review. This time, it's of my brand new Mahjong set. So these are Mahjong tiles, real Mahjong tiles. And um, we're gonna go ahead and open it up. But actually, this video is gonna kind of be a dual purpose video, all right? Now, part of it's gonna be explaining what the heck Mahjong really is, and then the other half is gonna be the unboxing and looking at the, 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 this actual kit. Now, if you already know what Mahjong is, the real Mahjong, I'll go ahead and put a timestamp that you can skip ahead. Now, if, on the other hand, you think Mahjong is that little matching game that you probably played on your smartphone where you have piles of tiles and you match up the little symbols and the, little, the, 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 the tiles slide off the side of the board while nice, calm music plays in the background, okay, yeah, this part of the video is for you because that isn't really Mahjong, okay? Um, Mahjong is actually a very ancient game, it originated in China, and it's a gambling game, and it's usually played, almost always, there are a few exceptions, but it's usually played with four, peop four players, and you play multiple rounds to accumulate points, and whoever has the most points at the end wins, and of course there's money involved, or you can just play for bragging rights and fun. Okay, now if I had to very quick, in a nutshell, try to tell you what, what Mahjong is like, as far as like a game that you might have played, like a Western card game, for example, it would probably be closest to Rummy. Um, of course, this is way more complex. Trust me, I'm a beginner, I'm learning how to play this, and this has a lot more rules. But then again, it has a lot more possibilities, and we're gonna get into that. Um, but overall, yes, the idea is to make a certain condition, like in, you know, have a certain hand, which allows you to go out, and when you go out, that stops that round. Now you play multiple rounds, but that stops that round, and then you add up the points. So you're trying to, trying to do two things at the same time. You're trying to go out, i.e., meet the criteria to say Mahjong, but at the same time you want to have some points when you do that, because points are what obviously makes you win, or in some cases collect more money, right? Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and end this, but I want to give you um, kind of a comparison. Um, since I said this is a gambling game, um, I thought I'd compare it to not the game like Rummy so much, but a game that we here in the West play and has blown up in popularity, especially over the like, like last decade and a half or so. Um, of course, you know what that game would be. It would be Texas Hold'em, right? So, um, and I'm going to kind of do a comparison of why I think this is so much more in-depth, and to me, this is so much more appealing than Texas Hold'em. If you like Texas Hold'em, great, but um, I think that's a, this is a good contrast to see, you know, two different gambling games, okay, from two different places, two different cultures. Okay, the three things that I think make this so much more engrossing than Texas Hold'em is the following. You have the amount of options that you can do, and we'll get into all the different hands, all the different ways of making points. The second thing is um, the pace, and not just is it fast or slow, but how that can change, um, and you can use that to benefit yourself. You can either slow down the game, speed up the game, and well, we'll go into that. And the third thing is just the constant change that this game has in it. Now, um, so let's start with the first thing, and I'm going to talk about the options, okay? Um, so I'm going to put up this. You probably, for you card players, you probably got this memorized, right? But this is the ranking of poker hands, okay? So if you see, you know, those are the hands of what are the nine, I believe, there. And, all right, so those are your options. Now, let's, I'm going to open this up real quick and pull out the instruction booklet. Okay. So here's the, it came with the instruction booklet, and of course, um, this is kind of like the quick and, uh, quick and dirty instruction booklet, meaning that, I mean, this is, trust me, there's way more you need to know than what's in here, but I guess this gets you started, the kind of quick guide, right? Okay, so let's just get to these hands here. Now, this book, like the little card I showed you, this one is for Mahjong. And we'll start. So I'm just going to flip the you know, there. So these are examples, and they're kind of giving you the idea what kind of hands you can make. Okay, we're starting from the lower hands and going up. That page. There. Turn. There. Another page.
Okay, so I think you can get where I'm going with this. There are a lot of hands you can make in this, and of course, because of that, there's a lot more options. There's always something to shoot for. If you didn't quite get what you think you were going for, you can change it up and go for one of those many hands that you saw presented there. So, not only are there a lot of hands, but the fact that making certain combinations can score you different points. It might be the same combination of tiles, but based on how you made that combination, it can be worth more or less points. So yet there's another layer that adds even more options um, or possibilities. Okay, now let's get to pacing. That was our second thing, so pacing. Pacing in this game, um, you can how I say you can kind of control the pace um, based on well making certain hands or adding to your hand, um, and every time you add to your hand, so like you see, uh, for example. I can use this, boom, and, uh, and uh, it gets me closer to going Mahjong. Well, the fact that I was able to take the tile and do something means the turn comes back to me. So you go around the table, right? There's four of you sitting in a table, uh, in essentially a circle, right? Or the four sides of a table, right? So it goes around a circular, um, turns do. Um, but if I'm able to do something, even though it might have been this guy's turn next, because I was able to do something based on what he discarded, uh, then it goes back to me. So then now the turns have to go around yet again. So by doing that, you can keep, you can essentially skip people, right? It was going to be your turn, but oh, I made a match, so now it's back to my turn again. <laughs> so what happens is you can kind of get people skipped. So that guy might be close to going Mahjong, but if you can keep the turn from getting to him, right, you essentially you have better chance of stopping him or maybe even going Mahjong yourself. Um, the other thing about pacing is, let's take it back to you. Let's say you're on the verge of making um, a, a hand, right? And you're going to go for this real high scoring or a hand. So like, well, I don't know, let's pick one of these. Uh, okay, like, well, you're going to go for that. You're trying to make this here. We'll call this, a, uh, was, um, how about we do a triple pong, okay? So you're trying to make a triple pong. But then you see, wait, you know what? That guy's getting even closer to making his hand, which might be even worth more points, right? So he might be, I don't know, making a, what's cool, all honors hand, okay? And that's worth more points, so let's get him more money. So I can abandon my trying to get that hand I was doing and just try to go out. So I will not wait for that particular tile to do this cool little combination. I'm just gonna try to go out. And there's a particular thing, they're called chows, which they're like, just think of it like a three card straight, okay? Of course you have more tiles in just three, but you can fill up your whole hand with this, these little mini straights, right? And that allows you to go out. It doesn't get you any, any points, but you can go out. So in essence, I can now try to shut the round down so I can prevent him from getting all those points he's going for. So you see, you can constantly change the pace um, in mo multiple ways, and you can change your strategy within the same round. You can change from going very uh, defensive to aggressive or vice versa. All right, and for our last um, category, um, I had I said that was the constant change. And what I mean by the constant change is the fact that every turn in this game for what, any player starts with them getting a new tile. So they take a tile, and they can either use it or not use it, and then, of course, at the end of their turn, they have to discard a tile. So their, the amount of tiles in their hand will always stay the same, but they're constantly getting an influx of new tiles to decide what they're going to do with. So there's, um, a, and there's a few places you can get new tiles from, too. You can get them from the wall, um, essentially consider the wall like your draw pile, you know, um, you know, kind of like the game Go Fish. <laughs> okay, so anyway, that's like the draw pile. But you can also get tiles from other players' discards. So if a player discards something that you could use, you can grab that. Um, and so you have multiple places to grab new tiles from. And every turn starts with you getting a new tile. So even to the very last play, you have these options of getting new possibilities. Unlike, for example, Texas Hold'em, where the cards you have are the cards you have, and that's that. You can't change them. So there is yet another layer of um, complexity. 
Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna open this up. So um, first to show you the container that it comes in. It's a kind of a foldy portfolio type deal. Um, this is decent heavy. Um, I mean, you definitely know there's something in here. This is not a light kit by any means, but that's good because I like my tiles, especially in Mahjong, to be kind of chunky and kind of heavy and some substance so the weight is expected and in some cases welcome now moving around you see it has there we go and there's the handle which you definitely will need okay and the bottom all right so it closes with these button snaps so you open those up let's do that and the fold down. There you go. Right. So, the instruction book. Kind of already looked at that. And then the tiles. There's, they come shrink wrapped, which helps you organize. So you'll get. So right there we have our wand, our wand suit, or numbers, and you'll notice here that these do not have the English number written on top, so I mean, it doesn't take long to understand, you know, like that's a four and what have you, but I like these because I feel they're a little more ethnic and a little more um, genuine, <laughs> okay. Um, there are the circles. We have our winds, red dragon, green dragon, white dragon, and then um, we get one of those seasons and flowers, and then our bamboos. And I just opened it. Well, that's fine, because now we get to actually fill what these things feel like. Okay. So these are white and green. If you can see the green, there's actually kind of a pattern in there. See that there? And um, also, uh, these are, I like these because the actual design is imprinted, meaning it's not just painted on, but there's actually, it goes into the tile. So, um, where's a, another example? Yeah. And um, that's good because it, um, on the cheaper sets, if it's just painted on, you know, there's always a chance that the paint will flake off or rub off. But here, since it's actually inside, in a groove, um, there's hardly any chance of that happening. So, longevity of the tile. And I think it just makes it look um, a lot higher end, higher end to have that. Um, and now, the all-important click-clack test. I, I, I like the sound, so that's one of the things I was talking earlier about the weight. So, yeah, okay, now what else? Uh, oh, let's look at the one of bamboo. And, all right, what do we have? We have blanks. Three dice, of course. And uh, they're the Chinese style with the red and blue pips and the <laughs> the big number one there um, okay and then there's this so we have winds right Is that the, all the winds yeah all right yep so there you go um now 
as far as the characters, I wanted to go into this. I'll use this, the number five here, and I'll, I'll use the four too. Um, you can see that the characters are really clear. Um, this is important because on some of the cheaper sets, um, like example here with the five, these two lines here would be touching one another and you wouldn't be able to really discern them as two lines. So the characters start to look kind of like blur or muddy or smeared. And in this case, you don't have that. The numbers are really clear. And a good test of that's the four because you see, you have a lot going on in a small space and you can still see the two little lines going inside the box. So good, so there's good resolution <laughs> on the, um, the characters. Uh, so yeah, overall, very good kit for the money. Um, I recommend it. 